Hello my brothers and sisters of the Order, welcome back to the Order, I am Celtic Templar. And today y'all, for this, we are actually going to be talking about one of our newest type of weapons, and it will be this bad boy. This is our 8th century Vendel Chieftain Sword. This is from Topeka. I bought this from Cult of Athena, and uh, well, let's just say it's uh, not exactly the cheapest type of sword they got on there, and they, the reason it is slightly expensive, for one major reason, is because it's designed in the sword itself. And it's actually stated that the Hobbit, for example, not the Hobbit trilogy film like we see Peter Jackson make, I'm talking about the book and as well the animated film, in which we so much hear the form that Gandalf stated that a gleaming golden horde and his witch on crown of gems were hung upon the sword. Which is kind of how this would be. In fact, whenever I think on the swords in Peter Jackson's books, or even in the tales of Beowulf, I'm always thinking of a sword like this. Now, I want to put this out here. This sword is by far awesome. And as well, you can already see, I already got it on my belt. For my baldric. So, wait, it could hang. Uh, now many of you might wonder, uh, Templar, what exactly are its features? Well, one, its overall type length is of a 35 and 3 fourths of an inch. Its blade is 29 and 3 eighths of an inch. Weight is 3 pounds and 5.1 ounces. Its width is, I want to say, 51 millimeters. And as well, its thickness is 4.3 to 4 millimeters. And as well, its Pommel is a uh, nut and riveted, so that's actually pretty much probably on there extremely tough. As well, its point of balance is a uh, four and a half, uh, one fourth, so of an inch. So it's like right about on the blade, right about there. It's trying to, it's kind of a little hard because most of the weight is right here in our grip. And that's actually the good thing because this means I have more controllability. In fact, this thing actually is extremely controllable. Uh, its grip is three and a half inches. The blade is made out of EN45 high carbon steel, or Damascus, depending on which one you buy. In fact, you can buy two versions of the blade. In other words, you can buy the one like I did, which is carbon steel, or you can buy the more expensive, which would be Damascus steel. And Damascus is pricier, but it probably is a little bit better, but I I think I'd rather prefer this, because one, I don't know why, I'm not a big fan of the look of Damascus when it comes to a decorated hilt. So, yeah. Uh, as well, when it comes down to it, you can also have, there are two, two type of designs you can actually have. You can either have the uh, tin plated with brass hilt accents, or uh, brass hilt with tin plated accents which I went with the tin plated with brass hilt accents mainly because uh, I don't know why I think I like it the better design look it looks a little more beautiful if you ask me and yes they do have like these ruby design I don't know if those are real rubies or not but they did actually do a very great job but I think this is actually just glass in here so why glass well for one it's actually stated that the beautiful form in which these blades were made were meant to shine and awe a foe from afar. And this is actually based on a historical Vendel period style sword. Now, the uh, cost differs from uh, whoever you buy from. Since I bought from Cult of Athena, this was somewhere around, I want to say, 201 to two, $403, depending on how much you want it if you want it in sharpening and such, depending on which group you bought it from, or as well depending on uh, the, the model you choose. Uh, but as well, the uh, major ones I've seen on other sites, it goes from 201 to 519, so it depends on the site. And they kind of have been out, so I finally got my hands on one, and I love this. And I do like the fact they even put the, the, the Pika symbol right there. Which is kind of cool. And as well, I also got this thing sharpened. So, 
yeah, this came in fully sharpened. It's light and effective enough. I don't want to accidentally hit myself because it's sharpened. Uh, many of you might say, or sorry to asking, oh, Templar, are we going to see a uh, test cutting with us? Uh, no, because one, uh, or helmet testing? No, we are not doing helmet testing. One, because of the fact, helmets are meant to stop, well, swords. They're not meant to stop. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, other type of, like, weapons, like an axe or a uh, mace or whatever, but when it comes to a sword, uh, a sword's not going to do anything. Which, uh, many people don't realize this, but swords are pretty much a side weapon compared to historical weapons, and pretty much this would have been the most costly thing you could ever get your hands on. Still, though, I do love it. It's extremely light. It's effective. The fuller is deep, is actually as wide as my thumb, which is a good thing. I also love the fact of how beautiful it looks. And in fact, as I said, whenever I think on historical uh, type of swords, especially from the tale of Beowulf or the Hobbit, I would normally imagine them looking as beautiful as this. Now, I want to put this out here. This type of sword is actually... Just another variation, or a decorated variation, of our late Roman Spatha. Which, <laughs> actually, they are somewhat the same blade length, but as well, as you can tell, the uh, hilt design is somewhat the same, because that's what it was. And in fact, the Vindal period uh, copied from the Romans and made their own variation, which make these bad boys. Now, there are, now we do have another... Uh, Vindal period chieftain sword. We will be doing a review on soon, uh, but I decided to go whichever one I thought would be best suited to start off with. Now, one thing I don't like though is the scabbard. The scabbard isn't as well decorated as our late Roman scabbard. Uh, <laughs> uh, many of you might wonder why is there this cloth on here? Well, one, this is my. Uh, cloth I chose for the historical point of the Celts. So, yes, I am planning on doing a how to dress as the Britons very soon. But, yeah. But, let me give you a good example why this isn't as fully decorated. Well, case in point, one, it doesn't have that beautiful brass design uh, piece here for your belt. As well, it doesn't have this beautiful black threads. It just has a wooden piece, which is kind of disappointing because, one, I would love to actually see that on here. That or as well, I might actually put this sword in here, maybe. It might work because it is actually the same uh, length and such. In fact, maybe we should give it a try right now. It's a success! <laughs> okay, now that is beautiful. <laughs> I want to say this. Now I think I should just keep it in the scabbard. <laughs> I hear many people already ask, saying, Templar, you should get a new type of scabbard for this. <laughs> well, now I do. I got a beautiful new scabbard for my new sword. So, yeah. And it fully comes out extremely well. Uh... While looking at the sword, though, I did see something problematic, and it's slightly about right here. There's a slight bit of an opening, but I don't think that was with the construction. I think that might have been, might be with the shipping. I don't know. I'm still kind of worried. Uh, but many people might wonder, Templar, why does the scabbard matter? Simple. The scabbard matters for a reason. It's what shows off its prowess. It's what shows off its beauty. It shows off that, well, this guy's a nobleman. And without that symbol, it's just a youthless wooden piece of junk. In fact, the Sutton Who scabbard, for example, had beautiful ornate design of brooches and such on it of jewelry to show that it was a, well, a great commander who died here. Or who was which was buried here. And in fact, Vindal period swords looked somewhat mostly like uh, late uh, Roman style. 
I don't even know if this one's gonna even fit in here, though, is the thing. Because I know it doesn't not feel like it. In fact, it's so tight in this thing. Don't try it already here, people. Go and get it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it does fit in there, but man, is that tight. So yeah. I'll have to probably uh, fix that later. But still, I think the this sword looks perfect in here. Because one, of that beautiful brass design. So, it does look perfect, I know. It's beautiful, I love it. So, yeah. But, maybe you might wonder, okay, Templar, why did you get it in carbon steel? Wouldn't it have been better to get it in Damascus? Yeah, but I don't know why. It just did not look good for me. I don't know why. I did not want to get Damascus steel for it. Plus, Damascus steel is slightly more expensive. But, if any of y'all want a beautiful sword, be my guess at getting a Damascus steel if you want, which is about 400 bucks. So, though, this is this beautiful. And, in such, it does go well for a Vindal style period design. I especially also love the how accurate they were trying to get to the style of what this would have looked like back in the day. Now, many of you might wonder, why is this thing up here? What is this weird lobe? Well... Some historians actually state that this might have actually been a uh, type of design place where probably was said to attach a leather cord. In other words, to have it attached to his arm. So that way, he didn't lose it. Or to symbolize on uh, which way the blade was. Because when we actually take a look at history, some of the swords that which were kept in their scabbards were somewhat still sharpened. And as well, many of them actually only had one end sharpened. So maybe it might have actually been a symbol to symbolize that the blade was sharp on this side and the, was blunt on the other. We don't exactly have that much information. But you gotta admit, this thing is pretty awesome. Does anybody else want a beautiful sword like this? Because let me tell you this, it'd be a crime to say you would never want one of these. Because one, they are beautiful, they are awesome. I actually got a comment uh, on my post uh, on YouTube uh, saying that it was too heavy or too, uh, point heavy or something like that. It's unbalanced. Well, technically that's the point. Swords like this, were, especially during the earlier periods, had more of a design of cutting, not for thrusting. Which, many people don't realize that, but that's how it was. So... Would this be perfect for a Germanic style reenactment or as well a trip to Valhalla with? Most certainly. It'd be perfect for a treasure hoard. And I have to put this out here. The design on this is so beautiful. They actually tried their best at making sure they got 100% accuracy on what these things would have looked like. Which I do love that. Now, I want to put this out here. The thing is actually incredibly light. In fact, I don't feel any fatigue at all. I can just... Move it around like so. Now I do have to be careful because it is sharpened, so yeah. Uh, but I don't exactly need to feel or need, feel the need to actually use my uh, index finger to do a uh, Italian grip, as it's known. Because one, <laughs> it feels extremely light to do it normally. So Topeka did their job at making it a great sword. So, why do I love Topeka's earlier design swords? One, they are beautiful. They are <laughs> just how they should have looked back then. Because Topeka tries their best at making sure the weapons are historical to their point. So, you gotta admit, I must have locked out. And I was, uh... Now, as well, I did also order a other type of Vindal Period sword, known as the Sutton Hu sword. Problem is, they were kind of out of stock at the point. So, uh, yeah, I'm still waiting on that one also. But, as well, we do got another type of Vindal Period sword, but I think you're going to like it a little more like I do. Uh, I can't say what it is yet, because we won't be doing it probably until after Thanksgiving. So, if any of y'all are ready, <laughs> here's the thing. Uh... Make sure to like and subscribe for more videos, and as well, also click the bell button for more notifications when the next video comes up. And as well, check us out on Facebook, so that way y'all can stay tuned for next videos. Anyways, guys, hopefully see y'all in the next one.
and have a great day. Mm -hmm.